Hello everyone. Uh, we are going to do something a little bit different today because I got all of my kill team stuff in. So I thought it'd be fun to just kind of maybe paint some minis, put together an army. As you can see here, I've got my veteran guards box. Look at that beautiful art. So I figured, hey, I got to put these guys together. We might as well put these guys together. So I'm going to give it a few minutes for everyone to join in. We're going to kind of chat. If you're not a kill team person yet, I would say, hey, join. It's super cheap and easy, but um, I have spent way too much money on uh, kill team lately for me to be able to just say that it is <laughs> it is cheap. You can't get into it for cheap. I would say if you wanted to start playing today at the bare minimum, oh, a hundred and $25, maybe 150 Like, you could probably find a used army for a little bit cheaper than that, but, you know, $100 will get you in and get you right. Uh, and this is such a fun tactical board game. There's a huge group playing it. One of my concerns when we play, um, when we play games, board games especially, I always fear that, uh, we're gonna run into a situation where you buy, like, you buy all the stuff, you get invested in all the stuff, and then no one else plays, right? That happened to me with um, Hero Clicks. I absolutely loved Hero Clicks. Had a whole bunch, hundreds and hundreds of dollars worth. Played in tournaments. Uh, did pretty well at a few tournaments, actually. And then everyone stopped playing. So I had all these pieces of plastic and nothing to do with them, so... Let's build some guards. Also, we had Kill Scream recently, which was the largest, second largest, largest tournament in the area. And I just wanted to show off a couple stickers that they made. Shout out to the uh, KTC people. So let me figure out where the heck is my camera on this thing. There we go. So we got a Space Marine sticker, a potential new logo. Check out that one. Uh, another Space Marine, everyone's favorite, Space Marines. Beautiful. This is a phenomenal logo. Absolutely love it. And then this is the group, uh, Cascadia Kill Team, KT. Uh, boom. Look at that. Thought today was Warhammer Day? No, Warhammer Day is on Wednesdays. And hopefully today is Thursday, because if today is Wednesday, I'm in some serious trouble, because uh, <laughs> I, I treated today as uh, Thursday. The mic keeps making a pop noise when I make S sounds. Yeah, it's because I'm, I'm close to my mic and I don't have a pop filter, because I'm all right on my... Uh, cell phone for doing this. So as I move away from the camera and do stuff, it should be better. It is Thursday. That is great news because, like I said, I thought today was Thursday. So we played Warhammer yesterday. We lost, but that is because my army is incomplete. And this box is going to fix that. I only, I've been playing with half a team, so obviously that half a team does not bode well, so I need the rest of my team put together to to stand a chance. Let's see here. Here's all my... I'm playing with the Death Corps of Krieg. 5,000 on army and still lost. Army, this army was not that expensive. This box is only $50, but you need two. You need two of them to function well, uh, is what I learned. So, you know, a little, little expensive, but not, not terrible. Let's see here. We need to make, so we need very certain, very certain guys to build this time round because last time we built the wrong guys and got in some serious 
serious bad stuff for building the wrong people. So we're going to try and avoid building the wrong people this time around. Uh, looking at the instruction booklet here, see, it does not fit very well on the camera, but uh, we're going to make the confident, the confidant first. So we are trying to make this guy in green there first. So let's put him together. And I have a bunch of leftover bits from last time we did this. So hopefully I can once and for all have my full team that I need. So we're going to grab our instructions here, all of our different plastics. Oh, let's see. And we need to be using our sprue cutters today. And most likely we'll need our fingernail clippers for when inevitably a couple bits get lost in there check this guy out though um uh, hopefully it shows on there i love how this guy's painted all black but i put glitter glitter in the black so you should be able to see if i get them in the light just right hopefully you can see there's green and purple glitters on this guy's armor and i really like that glittery look so i'm going to do more painting like that this guy unfortunately i just had to uh strip all the paint off of him i ruined his paint job so i gotta redo him this is from just like the warhammer board game the target exclusive so let's uh let's start with the base let's grab the death core of krieg also known as veteran guard are all on super small bases. They are tiny units. So they use these little 28 millimeter bases you see here. So we'll put that one there and let's see. Let's start putting this together. All your base are belong to us. That is that is an old, old classic. One of the great old memes. I was actually talking to Emmy about that the other day, like, maybe I'm just old, but, you know, uh, memes today, I can't tell if they're better or worse than they used to be, because, like, I was thinking about, do you remember the Rage, Rage Face era, where everyone had to do, uh, your, your memes were conveyed through, like, generic cookie cutter Rage Faces, like, I can't tell if that was the golden age of memes or the dark age of memes. Alright, we need to find this guy's body. And there it is. Alright, so we're going to start by cutting open number 26, which is this one. This one here. So let's free the body. Sprue cutters are an absolute necessity. I did this with, I, I know some people prefer to do this with like an X Acto knife. I really don't know why you would want to do this with an X Acto knife, but there is. This guy's torso. Can't get the camera quite. There we go. Come on, camera. Focus in on it. There we go. There is his little, little body in all of its glorious detail. Camera does not want to, does not want to focus on that. So we'll put his body right there. Next, we are going to need uh, 
A28 and A27 for his legs. 26 and 27 should hopefully be on here. Let's see if we can find it. I, I know we talked about this last time that we put guys together, but why do they not just put these all in in order? Why doesn't it just go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6? Why do we have to go all these numbers spread out everywhere? Makes it a huge pain to find the right feet and the right everything. See, 30, there's 28, so we're close. Okay, found it. Because it's more fun this way. It is It is like a Where's Waldo of uh, searching. So we're pulling on these legs right. If I can find my clippers. Of course, everything I'm grabbing is at the wrong level this time. I really need to find a better way to do this. When, I, when my computer is uh, finally, when my work computer goes back to work finally, I will have a top-down camera that will hopefully make this a little bit easier to do and talk and do all the stuff that we need to do. Put his leg down there and we need his second leg. tell you the most hilarious thing that happened at work today though so uh they were doing every every few weeks we do like diversity and inclusion meetings and things that you know just help with help with that end of the business and today's topic was psychological safety and it was supposed to be all about you know feeling safe at work and how can we better make you feel safe at work? And someone legitimately was like, well, I would feel more safe at work if I actually knew that I wasn't, you know, going to be fired at any moment as you're laying everyone off. And it was like, bravo to that guy for saying that, like being brave enough to say that. And I was like, I wonder, I wonder how they're going to answer that question because like that's, that's the burning question on everyone's mind, right? Is like, when are we all going to get fired? And they just like, okay, thank you for that feedback. And then they just moved on. Like, they, they did not want to answer that question at all. And just ignored that that even happened. Because they're like, we don't, we don't have an answer for, for that. How do we make you feel safe when we're just laying everyone off? Apparently, uh, they, they do not know how to do that. So... Um, yeah. <laughs> Alright, so this guy's got a little bit of stuff sticking out of him. So we're going to use our little nail file to just file down a little bit of the plastic. That'll make the glue stick a little bit better, and it'll make it sit more, more flushly crazy oh the the craziest thing that ever happened uh there was a phone call it was the entire like our entire side of our company so this is a multiple thousand people phone call with like leadership and they did an open forum and they said this is this is your chance right this is you come to us with your questions and we will answer any of your questions and so someone on a call with the CEO, with the heads of their company, with the managers on, stood up on this question call and was like, well, why are you guys so racist? I feel like you don't promote white people anymore. And like the entire phone call went absolutely silent and just like, how do you, how do you respond to that? And it was just, 
it was dead silent for like a minute. Everyone was like, "Did did they really just say that? Like, why why would you say that?" And their manager was just like, "You know, this would be a great conversation to have offline. So call me." Call me later and we will talk about this, which I am certain was code for call me later so I can fire you, uh, cause you done messed up. Let me move my lighting here and see if that helps my camera. There we go. So that is our first guy's body is put together. And look at how nice that looks. So we're using a new glue. And this, this super glue is so uh, super, I guess. It, it sticks so fast. It's ridiculous. So I have to be careful with this one. But that that is working to have the light coming from a different angle. So let me readjust, let me readjust the lighting here. Uh, let's see. That should work. This is the same guy who eats people's food from the fridge and doesn't think twice about it. No, I, I agree. I don't think I don't think that person had a single thought running through their mind when they uh, accused the CEO of racism on an all hands call. Like that's that's a career killer right there if I've ever seen one. All right, let's see here. Let's get this leg in there just right. Uh, this glue is already all over my hands, which makes this difficult. There we go. This stuff dries pretty fast too, so you've only got a few seconds to really, to really move things around before, um, before it's stuck. All right, so let's get him on the base. And there we go. We've got the beginnings of a man. We'll let him sit there for a few seconds so that he can dry. But look how absolutely tiny these dudes are compared. So that's a 25 millimeter base. That Space Marine is on a 40 millimeter base. Like, look at just how, how giant that dude is. <laughs> like... And then this is one of the aliens. Like, that poor... The veteran guardsmen have, like, the worst possible lives. Like, they're just average humans in a bloody and horrible universe in conflict. And they're just... They're just trying to survive. Get the camera to focus again. Now we are also going to, we've got really, really, really tiny magnets here. And see how tiny those are. So what we're going to do is we're going to just take one. These magnets are two millimeters by three millimeters. So like... They're so hard to show how tiny they are. Because, like, this rod is, like, 20 of them. These guys are so absolutely tiny. But what they're perfect for is we're going to put a dab of glue on the underside. And... Give it a few seconds to dry. There we go. And now we've got a completely magnetic base so that when these guys are traveling, I can put them in my little carrying case that has metal trays and they won't move around. He will be stuck in place, which is what we want. All right, so next... 
we've got to give this guy a face, which is going to be number A25. Now, this, I don't know why I care so much about this, because, like, if you, if you look at the faces, they all wear the same mask. It's, it's literally the same mask for every single guy. But for some reason, like, it, the, the box says that I have to use face number 25. So I'm going to spend half an hour searching for face 25 so I can use the right face because the instructions told me to. When is Mario Wonder going to be delivered? Oh, what, this... You're not having fun watching the Warhammers minis be built? You want to watch Mario Wonder? Um, my hope is... My hope is tomorrow. I, I really hope it'll be delivered tomorrow. Realistically... I, I have a fear that it's not going to come in until Monday, unfortunately. So, I want tomorrow. I would be surprised, honestly, if we got it on Saturday. But like I said, realistically, I really feel like it's probably going to be on Saturday, which or Monday, which is a huge bummer. Because by the time I get to play it everyone else will have already beaten it, so... Alright, our guardsman has his head. We'll give that a second to dry, and we need to grab backpack number 88. I am very, very excited to play Mario Wonder, though. It's, it'll be interesting to see some stuff, though, because apparently... Apparently, someone already leaked all of Mario Wonder. Like, they just uploaded the entire game. And, obviously, Nintendo is kind of upset about that. So, there's people who have probably already played the game, probably already beat the game, probably already posted everything about the game. I haven't seen anything. The, the only spoiler I've seen is that someone already made a mod for the game that makes the the flowers that talk in the game uh apparently apparently they modded them to say swear words at you um so so people are already making mods for the game too so i promise not to watch anyone but you i i appreciate that we'll we'll go into it no spoilers together all right our little guardsman dude has a nice little backpack now. So this guy's job, he is uh, the confidant. So his job is to watch his leader die. And then after that happens, his job is to pick up where his leader left off and and become the new, the new leader of the army. So... Uh, yeah, that, that is that is his entire goal in the game, is to watch his best friend and mentor perish in the horrors of war, and then pick up where he left off. So, like I said, the poor veteran guardsmen don't get to live a good life. Their, their life is rather miserable. But today or tomorrow, Mortal Kombat will be coming in. So, you know, we'll, we'll do, we'll maybe do one or two Mortal Kombat streams. Do you, do you all want to watch the excitement that is Mortal Kombat desperately trying to still be relevant in, in a world where Mortal Kombat hasn't been relevant since, like, the SNES? Maybe PlayStation 2, if we're being generous, but I think that... I think that, like I said, is pretty, pretty generous. Alright, so next we need to give this guy his gun. And he needs some arms. So let's get him... Let's get him some arms. 
The hard part about attaching the guns and arms to these guys, and I'll, I'll see if I can show this to you, but it's the detail's so small it's going to be hard to get the camera to... Oh, there we go. So as you can see, his hand is... Come on, you did it once. You did it once. His hand is on the pistol, but not attached to his arm. So we have to very carefully attach the hand in such a way that it sticks to the gun and to the shoulder and is properly in all the spots so that they don't turn out messed up. I have a couple figures that have uh, impossible arms in that like they, they bend, their hands bend in ways that aren't possible because I glued them wrong and I didn't realize until it was already too late. And I didn't want to amputate them, so they just have, you know, messed up, messed up arms now. So we're gonna we're gonna try and avoid that. So we need to find the right hands to to fit on this, which are seventy three and forty five. All right, we found we found forty five. I am excited to play Super Mario Wonder, though. I just, I'm still so, so shocked that we're getting Super Mario Wonder because, like, the Switch 2 is pretty much confirmed at this point, right? Like, there are patents that are leaking. Like, we know that the Switch 2 is, is coming soon, and you would think that they would want a Mario game for it, right? Like, why would they not launch the Switch 2 with a Mario game like that just that doesn't make sense to me why 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 would they not do that loud t-rex is here Mario wonder is fun you got your copy of Mario wonder already there we go he has an arm now look at that beautiful arm Mario wonder is fun that is good to hear uh how short is it? 20 minutes past midnight? Like, how how soon do you think you're gonna beat it? Probably get another Mario game with the console, like an Odyssey. I I mean, that, that seems like the smartest move, honestly, if we get Super Mario Odyssey 2 to come out with the Switch 2. Like, that would make sense to me. Switch 2, Mario 2, or, uh, you know, uh, yeah, Mario Odyssey 2. Like, that... That makes sense. So you might be onto something with that bubble. 100% or final boss. Just to get to the final boss. How fast can you get to the final boss? Who I assume is Bowser, right? Like, that. I've, no spoilers, but I'm pretty sure you're going to fight Bowser, right? That's just, that's just Mario 101, right? <laughs> or some form of Bowser or Bowser Jr. or... Something like that. You, you, it's not a Mario game if you're not fighting Bowser, right? Why can I not find this guy's arm? One or two days if I don't pay attention to Wonder Seeds and badges. I want the next Galaxy because Odyssey was such a short game. And see, that that's exactly why... That is exactly why we are waiting for the rental to come. Because... Super Mario games tend to be too short to be worth the money, in my opinion. Like, the games are... And they don't have a whole lot of replay value for me. Like, I love... I do still love going back and playing, like, Mario 3 and Mario 2. But realistically, it's never more than just like, okay, I'm going to play this game for a few minutes for nostalgia. Like, they just don't seem to have a lot of replay value, to me anymore. I know some people... I know some people get a lot of replay value out of it, and I, I envy those people. On the topic of kind of replay value and such, there is a guy who was proudly proclaiming today, he reached level 1000 in Red Dead Redemption Online, and he said it took him just under 10,000 hours to get to that level. 
He spent 10,000 hours playing Red Dead Redemption 2 online. Like, I have never... I have never loved a game that much that I could play it for that long. Like, maybe, you know, World of Warcraft I have the most hours in, but we're talking a game that's been played off and on for 20 years, 25 years? Like, Red Dead Redemption 2 Online came out in, like, 2000, 2018. So he's been playing... Uh, we did the math on it. It's six hours a day. He averaged playing six hours every day of Red Dead Redemption 2 to get to level 1,000. Like, 10,000 hours, that's that's enough time to, like, master an instrument. Like, you could become a master of a piano or the violin in 10,000 hours. You could learn, like, three languages in 10,000 hours. You could have a degree in 10,000. So, it's, I mean... You know, it's his, it's his hobby, it's his time, you know, whatever whatever you want to do with it, whatever floats your goat, right? But, like, 10,000 hours, uh, to me, wasted. That, that just, it, it sounds like a waste. And, again, it's not my life, it's not my place to say, but that, that really feels like an absolute waste of, of time. If they announce Mario Galaxy 3... I'd actually get the physical copy since I have both the Galaxy games. They, I mean, I would say they'd be stupid not to because Galaxy did so absolutely well, right? But, I mean, that's that's kind of Nintendo's gambit is they they make great games and they say, we're not making this anymore, and then maybe they'll bring it back in, in 20 or 30 years like Metroid or... Um, that racing game that's going all over the craze right now. I can't remember the name of F-Zero. So, or like how people, like if you put Pokemon, all the Pokemon games on the Switch, I would buy them again to be able to play all the Pokemon games in one place. So, you know, Nintendo, Nintendo do what Nintendo wants to do. Uh, I glued this to my finger and the model is stuck. Oh boy, we we messed up. We messed up bad. I I said this at the start that we wanted to make sure that we didn't get the the impossible arms, but it looks like we we're going to get stuck with some some impossible arms cuz I I did this wrong. Uh it you probably won't be able to see it here, uh, but his hand is not exactly in the right spot uh, on on that. And this glue is pretty, pretty permanent. Like, I would have to use a heat gun and a scalpel or X-Acto knife to, uh, to remove that. So, unfortunately, I think this guy is just going to have, uh, have some crazy hands. So, that is my... Confident, confidant, veteran, put together and made. He's part magic. He'll be fine. <laughs> he he is. He is part magic. We've got some warp technology going on, going on there. Next, we want to build... A demolition guy. We're going to want one demo guy, and then we're going to need multiple gunners. And multiple troopers. So there's ten figures in this box. We built one for the confidant. So demolition man will make two. We need four troopers. Well, actually, well, three troopers. Four, three, or four troopers. So somewhere between five or six there, and then three, three veterans. That's nine. 
And who will be our last? We'll have one left over. We'll have one spare body part. What will we? What will we make with the one spare body part? I guess we'll come to that when we get to that. Let's build our gunners next. Two. All right, we're going to do number seven next, our Grenade Launcher Veteran. Let's get... Yeah, this guy can move back a little bit. New base. I absolutely love putting minis together and painting them. Like, I never thought... I never thought I would have like that much love for all of this but I have become so so addicted to to the Warhammer stuff so we need a 38 39 and 40 I also, um, Emmy shared this with me today, and it is it is the worst thing I have ever heard. And because it is the worst thing I have ever heard, I'm going to share it with you all so that you can share in my misery. Um, we're a part of a local spooky book club, so they read like horror books all year round, and it's a good time. And obviously at one point they read it because oh, you can't read horror books without including the Stephen King, even though I personally don't like him, but that's you know that's that's neither here nor there, right? That that's not what we're here to talk about. Um So uh they were discussing Stephen King's It. And apparently there is a large portion of the community that ships Georgie with Pennywise. Uh, for you, for y'all at home who don't know what ship means, that usually means to to put two characters in a romantic relationship. And it's like, Georgie's like eight years old, so that's already messed up. But also, like, you know, Pennywise is some sort of horrible demon spider king from the nether realm, and Georgie's a human, so that's that's also messed up. Uh, you know, he's also you know the abuser in the relationship, so like it's it's every red flag ever. If if you think that Georgie and Pennywise should end up together as a couple after reading Stephen King's It, um. I don't know, I don't know what that says about you, but it says something bad. I, I feel like that's, that, I, I don't, I don't even have the words for it. Like, how could you possibly look at those two characters and be like, yeah, you know, they, they were really made for each other. I really hope that they, they make it together. Like, wh how, why, wh why, why would you think that? Gross. Yeah, exactly. It's less like. It's, it's so many red flags and so gross. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I do not know. All right, we put this guy's body together. Look at that. Look at that beautiful gunner veteran body. A little bit more glue. There we go. So it's one of those things where it's like I I had to hear it, I had to know that it exists, and now now you have to know that it exists because I can't be I can't be the only person walking around with that knowledge. Someone else has to share in in the misery of knowing that exists. Come on. 
that leg. There we go. We're going to hold that leg in there. This guy's doing a little bit of the stanky leg on me. Come on. It does not want to does not want to stick. There we go. People have way too much hand time on their hands and people are also gross. I mean that does that does very well explain most of the internet, especially the uh the Pokemon parts of the internet, if you catch my drift. Uh too much time on your hands and and too gross. Alright. You gotta stand. You gotta stand on your own two feet. You can do it. Um, maybe? I don't know. I don't know if I like that pose. It looks like he's leaning a little too far. A little too far forward, and I think his leg popped out of place just a little bit. It probably won't be a problem once I paint it, but I don't know. I don't know if I like it. I'm also addicted to Stardew Valley right now. Stardew... Stardew was an amazing game that came out just in time to show people that, like... Indie games can still punch above their weight class. That one guy... How is it that one guy made a game better than 95% of games that have come out in the last 5-10 years, right? Like, it's it's a beautiful creation that just... It, it shows... Oh, no. We... We touched the guy too soon, and he broke... Oh boy, come on. Alright, apparently we need to give that a little bit more time to dry before we before we fiddle with it, so it's worth the five dollars on the Google Play Store. I I have tried to play it on my cell phone, but I gotta tell you I I feel like playing Stardew Valley on the cell phone is like the worst way to experience Stardew Valley, unless you have a controller that, like, Bluetooths to it, like, it, the, the controls just aren't as good as, like, on PC or on Xbox or anything like that, so, it's still good, but it is, is not nearly as good on cell phone when you're dealing with, like, the tap controls. You bought Minecraft on every device. I do, I've, I've been kind of wanting to play Stardew Valley again, but I want to do, like, a super modded run, so I want to, like, do all the mods. Like, there's a mod that turns all the characters into vampires, and it's, like, a secret vampire coven underneath the town, and they, like, add original characters and things like that. So I think it'd be interesting to play Stardew Valley with all of the, all of the mods on. Attach all... All the mods. Alright, we're going to grab another one of these little magnets. And put it on the very bottom of this guy. Let's see. There we go. I love the town day music. Oh, every every time every time we're cooking, like when me and Emmy cook together, I either tell the the music to be Final Fantasy VIII soundtrack or the Stardew Valley soundtrack. Those are two of like the best soundtracks ever. All right, there we go. We got our, our magnet attached to the bottom. 
so that he can stick to my metal tray. And now, now he needs a backpack and a head. 37 and 89. I can listen to the Skyrim soundtrack on loop. To be honest, I have not given the soundtrack to Skyrim an honest shot. I think I should. Because I have heard many people say that it is that it is very good. Speaking kind of of that, um, apparently Starfield is now in, like, mixed to bad reviews on Steam, which is super, like, shocking to people because everyone is anticipating, you know, Starfield was supposed to be the next Skyrim, it was supposed to be the next game that you play for the next five to ten years, and it's getting, like, bad reviews still. Which, honestly, it scared me off from it. I, I haven't played Starfield because I'm afraid I'm going to buy it and not like it with all the bad reviews. So I'm trying to to give it a minute where I'm going to either buy it on sale or uh, PC Game Pass. Which I feel like I'm going to have to get the PC Game Pass for at least a month or two. Because we have Starfield and we have City Skylines too. And you know I love me some city skylines, so where we're gonna have to play that uh, for certain. I'm I'm very excited for the new city skylines. All right, guys, got ahead. Now he needs a backpack. I'm sure they'll do a free day weekend with bad reviews. Oh, potentially. What I'm also hoping for is with the Microsoft acquisition of Blizzard, I really hope World of Warcraft goes on um, uh, what do you call it? Game Pass. I would love to see World of Warcraft get a fresh breath of new players and also a console port would be amazing because I love playing with controllers, so I would really love to see World of Warcraft get that. Right, I'll put this guy's backpack in, and there he goes. He's got a little backpack. Look at that. I have no time to play anymore. Yeah, uh, unfortunately, kids will do that to you, right? <laughs> That's the curse of kids. It's 78 and 43. Let's see. 78 should be pretty easy to find. It's a grenade launcher. Have fun painting. I'll go to bed since it's almost 1 o'clock. Oh, definitely. <laughs> get, get some sleep so you can start playing Super Mario Wonder again first thing in the morning, right? <laughs> Where is where is my grenade launcher? Should not be should not be tough to find a grenade launcher. Seventy one, seventy five. We need seventy eight. Forty-two, getting farther away. Oh, I cannot find this thing. There it is, seventy-eight. Okay. This is another one where the hands are glued on to the gun, so we're going to try and do this right. Again, so that we don't have magic floaty hands. Because I want some of my troops to look good. 
poor guys. All right, so we got 78, and now we need 43. Forty-five, forty, forty-three. Found it. Okay. All right. So we're gonna try and glue this guy's hand into the proper position. First, I think that makes sense. And then, then glue it onto the body. Let's get this arm in position first. Oh, well, glue is sticking all to me. Come on, there we go. See if we can get. All right, we just need to hold it just like that for a little bit. Let's see if we can get the camera to refocus. So we're gonna try and set the arm just like that. Come on. Oh, I dropped him. Arms hanging on by a thread. This quick drying glue is a blessing and a curse. Sometimes it dries too fast, sometimes it dries too slow. There we go. Now we've got a floating hand and we need to make sure that it does not float. When we attach the arm. See if we can get this on the first try. I think we did it. Well, it's close. That actually looks, that looks right. He looks like he's loading a grenade into his grenade launcher. With a little bit of painting, that small little looking gap will disappear. All right. And with that, we now have a grenade launcher all set up. Look at him. All right, that's two. We're making we're making some progress. I need to grab my water, so bear with me one second while I step away and grab my water.
All right. Who are we going to build next? I think we're going to grab another gunner. Number 6C. I definitely need to get my desk set up for building miniatures because I gotta tell you, this is killing my back. There's the statue of a soldier in my hometown in the downtown section. He's holding a grenade and it's facing the Sacred Heart Church. They made the town paint the grenade to make it less noticeable. Yeah, I, I, I could see that. Uh, you know, I know the city tries to, and the city and state both try to. Uh, you know, not be political, but putting up a statue of a guy throwing a grenade at a church kind of sends a message and probably not, probably not the message that, uh, they necessarily want to send. So I, I, I can see that. I can see them saying, hey, can you, can you paint that? But knowing the city, if it was the city or the state, right, they probably paid someone, what, like $15,000 to go paint it, $20,000, like... There was a story uh, that floats around, so I don't know if it's true or not, but it floats on the internet all the time. That's, you know, a, a person said that they needed stairs at their local park to be ADA compliant and to make it easier for people to come and go, or a ramp next to the stairs, and the city was quoted saying that they would need to raise, like, $80,000 to build the ramp, and some dude just put it in overnight for, like, $500 in material, and I understand that, you know, that that's not that's not legal and they didn't follow all the proper channels, but like stairs should not cost as much as a house, right? Like that there there's an issue there. It was a complete oversight. Oh, I am yeah, I'm I'm sure it wasn't intentional, but I although I can't be certain if the statue was there before the church. I I have no idea. That I have I have not a not a great historian. You know who would know is those geo guesser guys. Those guys who just like, oh, they land in an area and they can instantly tell you based like, oh, well, based on this type of grass, it has to be this country because it only grows during this season, and I can tell by the shadow of the sun that this is summer in Norway based on the angle of this grass. So if you can find a geo guesser in your area, I am certain they will be able to tell you everything about that statue and everything about that area because uh, those guys have some absolutely insane knowledge when it comes to that. Also in my hometown, the fire station burned down. That is that is one of life's great ironies when the fire station burns down. There's a there's a King of the Hill episode about that, in fact. Really good episode. One of the few episodes where you get to see uh, things from Boomhauer's perspective. <laughs> Hopefully everyone's okay, though. Def definitely hoping that everyone made it out okay from said fire. I know we had wildfire season... Uh, a couple... A couple of years ago, we had a bunch of wildfire seasons, and it was terrifying. So I know that, I know that fires are are no laughing matter. But there, like I said, there is some great irony when it's the firehouse that burns down. All right, we've got one more piece together before I can start putting this guy together. I need to find his foot. No one was hurt. It was just hilarious. Okay. If no one was hurt, we can laugh about it, right? Oh, boy. This guy's foot just went rogue. One of the hardest parts about these sprues is they require a little bit of force to, to pop them off of things. And when you use that little bit of force, they just go flying absolutely everywhere. And it's a huge pain because once they go missing, they're they're basically impossible to find once they've gone flying, flying off all over the place. 
Everyone has given him so much flack because his small town. I remember when I was young, our uh, one of our neighbors accidentally sent uh, set the hill on fire behind our house, and we legitimately thought we were going to to lose everything. That the, the fire was going to rage out of control. And luckily some firefighters swooped in and got it under control with some uh, uh, air support and things like that. Um, and we, we, I got to like serve them food like a hero's breakfast. Like it was such a cool, such a cool thing to like meet the people who saved your house and your childhood home and thank them for doing that. And it was, it was a lot of fun. Not a lot of fun to almost lose the house, though. They'd show up to an emergency and people would say, you sure you can put that out? Or thank goodness the fire. This isn't a fire, <laughs> otherwise I'd lose the house. That actually, uh, I, I've heard again, you know, I've read this on the internet, so is it true? Who knows? But I've read that Back in the day, before, like, fire departments were a publicly funded thing, that the, the fire, that firehouses were basically an insurance thing. So they would show up to a fire and say, okay, do you pay insurance through the fire department for us to put this fire out? And if you said, no, I don't, I don't pay you guys, then basically they would just let your house burn down because, well... You didn't pay us. You didn't pay for the emergency service, so sorry. We're just gonna let your house burn down, but we'll ensure that anyone who's around who is insured doesn't doesn't lose their house. And like, I I couldn't imagine how awful it's gotta feel that people show up like, well, we've got the equipment to put this fire out, but um, you didn't pay us, so we're just gonna let your house burn down. Like. That's, that's got to be pretty hard. Pretty hard to, uh, undergo. Alright, is that guy, his feet are flat on the ground. He's looking good. If I get the camera to focus on him. There we go, no. These guys are stealing the spotlight. There we go. Come on. Looking pretty good. I don't know why my camera's automatically adjusting to to those guys in the background, but what if I move them if I move these guys out of the way? And this guy. Why are you doing this, phone camera? Why, why does it not want to focus on this poor dude? Give him the credit. I know he doesn't have any arms and legs, but he deserves, he deserves to be seen too. There we go. Alright, uh, as for a head for this guy, he needs A29. I also want to find some guys who play this game, this board game. Uh, there's a, a game called Tabletop Simulator. And it is, as you would expect, it is a simulation game that simulates a tabletop so you can play any board games on it. And I know there's a few guys who play this game on that. I'd love to be able to play a round of that online from my computer so I can show you guys the game that I play every Wednesday. We can play a, a real match of kill team through through TTS. Aspire Painting, welcome in. Good evening. How's it going? 
I'm guessing from your name you're a painter. Do you do you paint minis too? Do you paint Warhammer or any of those kind of miniatures, or is it the uh, I don't want to say actual painting, but you like painting, painting art, painting canvas. All right, this guy's ready for his arms. Finished dinner, and you're prepping some minis for assembly. Ooh, who are you building? What are you building? What arms does this guy need? He also needs a backpack. 85 is the backpack. Let's grab that. 84, 85. Okay. I'm building minis for the games Free Blades and Bushido. I don't know Free Blades, but my local game shop has quite a few people who've been playing Bushido lately. And when I asked them if I should play Bushido with them, they basically told me that the game is super, super complicated and to just stick with uh, Warhammer instead because Bushido is really, really hard to learn and not a lot of people play it. So, I, I thought about getting into Bushido, but the, the local the local game store guys who know better than me said, no one plays it and it's too hard. So, I've been doing Rumble Slam and Kill Team instead. Got that guy's little backpack. So we need A73 and I don't think it's too hard. It's just a high skill ceiling game. If you play veterans, you'll get raffle stumped. Well, I mean that's that's true for a lot of a lot of uh, games, right? I've been playing a little bit of kill teams here and there, and when I play against you know the people who actually know how to play the game, they absolutely dominate me. Uh, so I have no problem losing as long as there's something to to learn from it. My main game is Infinity. I've not played Infinity, but uh, our local board game shop has some of the Infinity, like, um, like a battle map out, and I love, I absolutely love all the, the buildings for Infinity, like the little panda, the panda, like, burger shop, and, like, all the, all the, um, is it... Is it steampunk? It's not steampunk. It's a cyber... Is it like a cyberpunk? Like, all the buildings have, like, really cool models and a lot of cool ads and things like that. So, I really love that part of Infinity. But again, it's, it's one of those things where, like, I never see anyone play it. So, I'm hesitant to get into it. Because I said at the beginning of the stream, like, I used to play a ton of Hero Clicks, And I absolutely loved it. And I invested a ton of money into it. And then no one played it around me. So it's like, what's the point of investing all this money into into a game if people are just going to stop playing it and then you have then you have no one to play with, right? That, that sucks. So I'm really hesitant to get into new games because I'm always afraid that people are just going to stop playing and it'll be a waste of money. I'm trying to take a break from Infinity so I don't get burned out. I'm the local Infinity demoer, and it was getting a bit much after participating in two back-to-back -back tournaments and then half a dozen demos. You have that many people playing it in your area? That's that's surprising. Like I said, I've, I've not seen anyone play Infinity at all in our area, so I'm shocked that many people are playing. It's a good thing. I'm glad people are playing war games and tabletop games and all that. I'd hate to see it die out. Even even if it is a little bit of expensive and a little bit of an addiction here and there. You know, you don't want it to you don't want it to go away. It was just me two years ago and I've got a group of fourteen people with a bunch of interests on the side. 
one person pushing it can definitely make a huge difference. If if one person really gets out there and says, let's play this, let's do this. Because um, that's, that's what happened to Rumble Slam. Absolutely no one was playing Rumble Slam in our area. And then one guy was just like, hey, I think these minis are cool and I really like wrestling so let's all play rumble slam and a whole bunch of us got figures and now now we're playing rumble slam so it really does only take one person to really just jump into and say let's do this and get people interested in if you're if you're demoing it and getting people you know the ability to play and all that like that makes a huge difference i cannot find this last piece that i need to put this guy's arms together for the life of me, we need 73, 76, 70, where is your arm at, bro? Why can I not find this 43? Now I need 73, 53, 60. This guy's arm is driving me absolutely bonkers. 66, 70, 63. No, we need 73. 67, 55, 41. How many minis do you have to put together? I'm, I'm putting together 10 right now. And we're, we're at almost an hour and 20 minutes. And I've got two and a half minis put together so i am i am not making great progress at this at all mostly because i get stuck looking forever and a half for little arm pieces you're doing a whole bundle but i'm just building like four today how big is a bushido army when i see the local people playing it it's like they usually have like seven figures, seven or eight figures, so it's not huge. Because I know with Warhammer you can get into like, here's my army of a hundred figures. So I know it's not crazy like that, but... Oh, why can I not find this darn arm? 55, 41, 59, 80s... It's driving me crazy. 47, 43, 45. That's why, because we already cut that arm out at some point. Let's say eight figures. I've got them in two free blade factions. I went overboard and just bought two factions. I've gone a little overboard with Warhammer too. It's it's very easy to accidentally go a little overboard um, with with miniatures. It's so easy to accidentally spend a couple hundred dollars on on factions and different things like that, right? Like it it unfortunately can go so quickly. Like, people, people call uh, Magic the Gathering expensive and Cardboard Crack, but uh, plastic is a whole different, a whole different ball game, right? When you start getting into the plastics. Alright, let's see here. Looks like Instagram... Yeah, the, the Instagram link on my channel is unfortunately broken. Um, all, a lot of my links are broken. I, I haven't been taking streaming too seriously, but I am. I plan on revamping my channel here soon, which means I am going to uh, fix all of those links. Uh, my, my website's also down, too, because I couldn't afford to get my website revamped up. Or re redone because I'm losing my job here soon, unfortunately. So a lot of my stuff has gone 
has gone to the wayside, unfortunately, as I've been focusing on on work and other things until until they let me go. But it is all going to be fixed here soon. I, I need to invest the time into, into the stream. Uh, I did just win a photo contest, though, so I'd love to love to show you the photo if, if it was still up, but let's see. I need to figure out what arm can I use for this because my... Oh, thank you for the follow. I appreciate that. Um, can I use that arm? Looks like maybe I can use that arm. We are going to attempt to do some kit bashing here as we try and get all of my army put together because one of the things I really dislike about Games Workshop, and I'm sure other other people, other workshops do this too, but like the idea that you need to buy three boxes to put together one army because we don't give you enough pieces in in one in one box to do it is super, super frustrating, you know? Like, why not just sell me a box that has everything I need? Why why do I need to buy three different boxes and I'm still kit bashing it together and trying to figure out how to make it work when you can just sell the army all complete? Like, you're making the army. You can make it all work. Uh, do I have a link to the picture? I do not right now because I am on... I'm just doing this all from my cell phone, because also, in terrible, terrible kind of news, my my camera holder for my stream broke, so every, everything that has gone wrong for the stream, or everything that could go wrong, has gone wrong uh, when it comes to the stream, unfortunately. My camera holder broke, all my links are broken. I've been focusing on other things lately, like... Because then they can't charge you as much money. Yeah, that, and I know that's what it boils down to, is they want their money. And I get that they want their money, but it just seems like... If it was about money, couldn't they charge the same amount? And say, okay, instead of selling you three boxes, we're just going to charge you for three boxes, but put it all together in one box. Like... I told you to just prop us up on some dodgy books. I might have to do that. I might have to. I think the idea is that they don't think an army as a whole would sell due to price. Rather, they expect people to be designing their own lists and then buying just what they need. Buy packaging that separately, then they can easily track sales. I mean, there's probably some truth to that. I mean, it does ultimately boil down to, like, we talk about this a lot, right? Like, obviously the businesses know what they're doing, and they have figured out that that this is, that this works for them, right? Like, if, if it didn't work for them, then they would, they would do something else, right? Like, if it wasn't making them money, then they would do something else that made them money. These businesses aren't aren't dumb, right? They, they, they exist to make money. So if that's what it took to make money, then they would they would do that. Oh boy, I just dropped my gun with glue on it on the carpet. That's gonna get stuck to the carpet. That's gonna be horrible. Uh, oh, I found it. Okay. Alright, so that arm is not working super well. And it's already glued in there super good. So, that's not good. We're gonna have to, we're gonna have to do some major kit bashing to make this work. But I will make it work. 
Try a different arm. Yeah. Trying to get my kid to hold and eat his own snacks. He can hold a pouch and eat it now. Working on a banana. That's exciting. Every little step, right? Little, little steps, little bits of progress. It's poor Husky. I don't know if you can hear the Husky in the background. One of our neighbors basically just leaves their Husky outdoors all day. And the poor thing just yells and screams to be put in all day long. Poor thing. He's so lazy, but I can't feed him like a baby forever. <laughs> I mean... You could, but then you're going to be doing that forever, right? So it's, it's better to better to do it now than, than have to deal with the consequences later, right? He's two, it's time. All right, so here's what I've decided we're going to do. We're going to give this guy his own lore. Because uh, I've messed this up. But it's, it's going to be good, right? Because now, now every masterpiece has a flaw, right? So this guy. If I can get this gun to stick. Holy cow. Come on. I do not know why this does not want to cooperate at all. So he's missing a hand because uh, he lost it in the war. So he's supposed to hold this gun with two hands. But, you know, he he's a hardened, grizzled veteran of many, many Warhammer Wars. So he lost one hand, unfortunately, in the war. And has gained the ability to shoot this gun with, uh, with one hand. Come on, glue dry. You can do it, glue. He broke another glass today. We're going to be drinking straight from the tap bottles soon. You've just got to... You've got to learn the art of bringing home plastic cups and just drink from the plastic cups, right? The limited edition McDonald's plastic cups. He's also part magic, so it checks out. I don't know that this is so much magic as it is... Uh, just missing a hand. I really wish this glue would set, though. I, I, I've never had the glue not, not set this fast. I don't know why it's struggling to, to connect. I don't know if it's just too heavy or... Maybe I put too much glue on it? Like, it's not... Not drying at all. There we go. Alright. So, as you can see, this poor guy, he lost... He lost his hand in the war, but... 
He's still he's still being a good trooper about it. Uh, you can see his his hand is still clutching the weapon. It, it literally it got chopped off and uh, stuck to the weapon. So you know he he just left it there as a as a grizzly war trophy to to ward off other people. Look, you can you can cut my arm off, but I'm still gonna come for you. So there it is. Dexter's here. Hello, Dexter. How is it going? All right, so we got two gunner veterans down. We need to do one more gunner. And that is going to be This guy, number eight. Did you uh, almost quit your job again today, Dexter? Or, or are things getting better yet? All three guys that we made out there. My eye is slowly getting better. I worked from home today, less than six hours to Spider-Man 2. Working from home so that we can play Spider-Man 2 as soon as it comes out. Like, that is a brilliant idea. You're off tomorrow to play video games. There was there was someone complaining about that on, on Twitter. They were saying, like, how... It was what's that term that the girls are using now? It's the ick when, when a grown man takes off work to play video games for a day. It gives me the ick. Like, how wrong are they? Like, that's such a normal thing, right? Like, people take off to go hunting. They take off work to go fishing, to go hiking. Like, there's nothing wrong with taking a day off work to enjoy a video game launch. You'll be happy to know, Dexter, that I am not getting Spider-Man. Uh, the rental company is sending me uh, Super Mario Wonder and Mortal Kombat 1. So there will be no Spider-Man spoilers on my stream. We will be doing Mario instead. And then once I return Mario, we'll probably get Spider-Man in about a week and a half. Because I'm, I'm guessing I'm going to beat Super Mario Wonder in like... Three days, probably. So I'm not going to have it terribly long. People who think adults can't play video games are bonkers. I, I get it to a degree. I, I'm, I'm not on the team no video games. Obviously, I play a lot of video games. But I also understand how there are people who are, like, flat out addicted to video games. I don't think... I don't think we talk enough about video game addiction in our society... So I understand how there are people who have been neglected in relationships or things like that who have a vendetta against video games for causing that. I, I do understand and sympathize with that to a degree. But it's like anything else, right? Like, obviously, if you had a partner who neglected you for hunting or fishing, you might not like that. But that doesn't, that doesn't mean the hobby's bad. It just means that person had an addiction or messed up priorities, right? Early stuff is saying is Wonder is the best 2D Mario in forever. Um, what was the last 2D Mario game? I guess Mario Maker would count as the last 2D Mario, right? And Mario Maker 2 was was phenomenal. So I, I don't know. I don't know that I I would say that it's the best Mario in forever. I, I I'm. I'm skeptical of that claim. I, I got, I got some some skepticisms of that uh, of that claim. I haven't played it yet. That that is true. I have not played it yet, so you know I'm I'm not in a position to rate it, but we'll we'll know in a couple days when I get it. 
when it stops you from doing adult things, yes, but uh, playing an hour of games instead of an hour of watching TV is no difference. You're so lucky I'm respectful because I wanted to cuss you out. I'm, I'm, I'm not... I'm not... I'm not rating a game I haven't played yet. I'm just saying that I'm skeptical of it being that good when we just had a really good game come out. So... I, I'm just saying... Super Mario Bros. Wii's was the best with the helicopter hats and stuff. It was such a great game. Uh, yeah, Super Mario Wii and New Super Mario Bros. Wii U were also good. So I just, I'm just saying that it's got some some hard competition to have the best title, you know. Plus, it still has to compete with um, Super Mario Two, which is my all time favorite. So. That'll be a tough one to beat. The only games that I will review that I won't play are Dark Souls games. Because I can, I can review that game without playing it because I despise those games. And that is, this game is not made for me. I'm sure it's more of the same that people absolutely love. But uh, I don't get it, so... There you go. Review done. Uh, oh, well, we just lost a piece again. All these darn little sprues falling on the floor. All right, let's paint this guy, or let's put him together, I guess is the more proper term. Get some glue. I can't wait to get my workstation set up so that you can actually see all what I'm doing. Okay, got some glue in there. Now we're going to get a little bit of pressure on him. And where did I put his leg? Oh boy, I lost. Can't remember. I did tell you about my eye injury. You, you said that it was irritated, but I believe last you said you didn't know how it got irritated. Just that it, it was that you scratched it. Did you figure out what happened? I know you just told Bo uh, Bubble that it was getting a little bit, a little bit better. All right, let's get that leg. That doesn't look right. Maybe like, hmm, that's not looking quite right. It's got a little bit of a, a leg issue going on here. I told people at work the... I was taking out Friday and someone said, you messed up your eye on purpose. <laughs> I'm starting drama on Monday. That doesn't look right. Why? Oh, it's supposed to be... Okay. There we go. So his leg is supposed to go like that. 
like he's running. It's conspiracy theory I can get behind. He did it on purpose. What say this would scratch their cornea on purpose? There are some people that exist out there who who don't who don't believe in taking sick days unless you're actually sick. Like they don't believe that mental health days are an actual legitimate reason to use a sick day. So I am certain that there are some people out there who will either physically harm themselves or intentionally get themselves sick so that they can take a sick day because we're so brainwashed into thinking that mental mental health is not a valid reason to take a day off of work. Come on. You can stick right there. You can do it. Ah, come on. Like, I was that way for a while myself, where whenever I would call in sick to work, I would, like, fake that I was actually, like, sick, that I was coughing or throwing up because I didn't think that they would understand that a mental health day is just as important as as a physical sick day, right? Like, mental health is a huge thing, so I felt like I had to lie to take a day off from work. Because there's, there's just so many people out there who still don't believe that mental health days should exist. And it's honestly awful. Everyone, everyone deserves good mental health. At a mental health day. I think even kids deserve that. Uh, the whole perfect attendance thing at school, I think, is pretty awful. When you scratch your cornea, the eye hurts, it's hypersensitive, the light, it's blurry and watery. I'm not going to risk my life driving half hour for 20-something an hour. I mean, that's, that is fair. That is, that is fair. I cannot get this darn thing to stick. There we go. Now sit there and dry. Just a little bit. All right, let that guy dry for a second. This workbench is killing my back. I really need to get my stream set up on my PC and get my work desk set up to to do all this. I think this might be my last figure uh, to put together. Who have you painted so far? So I haven't I haven't actually gotten to any painting. Um, I've just been putting together. I've put together. My plasma gunner, I put together my grenadier, I put together my confidant, and now we're in the process of putting together my melta gunner. So, I haven't even made it to the painting progress, and I'm going to run out of time, because I am way too slow at putting together figures, apparently, so... We will have to save the painting for another day, unfortunately. I thought I thought I was faster than this, but I don't even have any good paint jobs really to show you because I had to I had to strip the paint off of a bunch of people so I could make them all match. So I don't even have good, I don't even have good paint to show off this stream, unfortunately. Just a bunch of wounded soldiers who have magical floating hands and guns. Alright, 
these should be stuck on there. Nice and good. There's his helmet. And now, quick backpack. And see, I so dumb the first time I put these guys together. So you can see this guy's got a little bayonet on his backpack right right there. I thought that bayonet was an antenna, so I accidentally put all the guys' backpacks on them upside down because I thought that that was an antenna, not a bayonet. I was like, oh, well, if it's an antenna, it's got to be sticking up, right? So... Yeah, I had to redo half of my dudes the first time round because I put the bayonets on upside down. I need to eat a good amount of food. I apparently uh, accidentally burnt more calories off than I ingested today. I'm going to paint you with pink and purple and sparkles. Actually, okay, so it's funny you mention that. So I have here, I can't really show it on stream because I don't have enough room. But I've got a box of Space Marines, and they all look like this, this guy, and I am going to paint them My Little Pony colors. So I'm going to have an Applejack and a Rarity and a Rainbow Dash, and they're going to be a little My Little Pony squad. What's up, Bubble? What you got? Where is... Where is my Melta gun now? a flamethrower. That's a regular pistol. There it is. 74. Glue. Poor Husky. So I don't know if you can hear him, but he is just screaming. Got one piece here. Now we need some other arms. Another piece falls on the floor. And we got that. Now we need a bent elbow. So we got a right arm. Now we need to find a left arm. All right, here we go. Hopefully this one works better than last time. What you got, Bubble? You said, oh, Coop, and then you went silent. I'm worried you're typing a lot. Or the kiddo took over. Okay. 
No, I say like, oh, who? Because upside down in antenna. <laughs> How many parts do these guys come in? This is a box of ten miniatures, and it's got about a hundred and thirty parts, I believe. So they come in usually, usually about five or six parts per. Her figure, unfortunately. Which I don't mind. Like, some people... Some people don't like putting together figures. And so they try and buy, like, pre-mades. Or that comes in one or two. I don't... I don't mind it. I, I like putting them together, so... Um... It's not not terrible, not too many, not too little, because like the Rumble Slam dudes, the Rumble Slam dudes come together in in either one piece or two pieces, and it's like what's the what's the point of putting together a figure that's only two pieces, right? Like, I understand a puzzle that's only like five pieces for like kids and such, you know. But if you're an enthusiast, why are you putting together a miniature? That's two pieces. You're just, you're just snapping two pieces together, you know? Oh, this is not working. I'm going to have to get this guy a different... A different left arm. So that one is weird. But uh, some of the ones, like the... I really want to play the the knights uh but the the giant robots and i think they come in like a thousand pieces and they're like a hundred dollars for one unit so they're they're a little too spendy for me but i would love to put one together sometime i feel like most of the hobby is the creativity oh 100 percent people People absolutely love putting together their stuff. There's some there's some people who absolutely love it, and there's some people who absolutely, absolutely hate it. So, you know, they, they come on both sides of the, the spectrum. Alright, let's try this arm. Might work a little bit better keep dropping my parts on the ground and they're getting cat hair all over them so I'm gonna have to write into my my guy's fantasy why they're covered in cat hair you have a lot of amputees have you not heard of honorable discharges um I'm pretty sure I am pretty sure that Honorable Discharge does not exist in the Warhammer universe. I am fairly certain that that is not, not a thing in this world. Fairly certain. Alright, this arm is not sticking at all, so we're going to have to file... File some of it. Hopefully that will fix it. Make it a rough surface. A little bit of glue. So cruel. So actually, it's interesting because the the lore behind the guys that I am specifically playing, uh, they are called the Death Cult of Krieg. So their specific lore is these guys aren't born like regular humans. 
They are vat-grown humans, and their whole thing was that they they became heretics and fought against their leader, and they decided to come back into the fold, and as punishment for becoming heretics and doing the bad things that they did, they learned how to vat-grow their own people so that they can... Um, supply the emperor with tons and tons of bodies and basically they they consider consider dying for the cause to be penance for for their great misdoings so the lore behind them actually fits in a little bit with them being a little broken and a little disfigured because their whole thing is they want to they want to atone for their wrongs and as a part of that they basically vat grow a bunch of clones and then let them let them die in service of the emperor to make up for the wrong that they have done so it, it actually fits their lore decently well. And like I said, Warhammer is a dark, dark universe, right? Like, um, the, 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 they literally have trillions and trillions of people fighting every day. So we're talking, we're talking loss of life and injuries and everything on such a grand scale that realistically they don't care about a couple mutilated people here and there because this is such a such a huge grand scale of death and destruction in the universe. All right, my light is about to die and my phone is actually on the verge of dying. So I think my four troops made there is going to be where I'm going to end the stream today. Uh, hopefully we'll be playing Super Mario Wonder tomorrow, but I am not confident in that. Like I said, I, th I think they're not going to ship it out and get to me until Monday. So tomorrow we will be back to regular streaming most likely. But I appreciate y'all coming and hanging out. Uh, Spire Painting, thank you for the follow and joining us. I hope to see some of your some of your minis here soon. Thanks for hanging out with us and chatting. I will be streaming again tomorrow, like I said. So we will see you all then. Thank you, everyone, for hanging out. Dexter, I know you didn't get to hang out for super long today, but hopefully your eye feels better, and hopefully uh, you enjoy Spider-Man. So... We probably won't see you tomorrow, but uh, do drop by and tell us how good Spider-Man is if you can pull yourself away from it for five minutes. <laughs> Everyone have a blessed evening, and we will see you again soon.